Good morning. Well, uh, it's not fair or nice. Hi. Just playing in the mud. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If it is your first time here, hello. This is the Tamterra Grows playlist where on the channel here, my mother and I walk you through as we build, develop, and grow on our 56 acre homestead in the North Okanagan of British Columbia, Canada. We live roughly 2,200 feet in the mountains and I would usually have my potatoes planted out at the beginning of May. Turns out it is the literal last day of May today and I'm trying to get them in the ground. That means we have to heavily, heavily attack the center garden bed that we have. It is extremely overgrown with grass creeping in from our live pathways. We also have a lot of rocks and other things that need to be moved because we're eventually mortaring in a rock wall to keep this garden bed in place. Let's get into it. I'm going to show you and take you along as mother and I kind of tear this garden bed out and get it plantable. Let's take a look at this garden bed that we are going to try and tame. As you can see, there is so much crabgrass this is my mom's cat, Smudge. She has recently been granted outdoor privileges and has been taking full advantage. It is all at least a foot and maybe even a foot and a half in some areas. It is completely overgrown and to be honest, it was very daunting walking towards this garden bed in the morning knowing I was about to spend a good few hours trying to tame it. What took up a significant amount of my time with this garden bed was simply trying to cut in an edge. We have live pathways and while I'm taking my shovel and all of my body weight, it felt like I was simply trying to cut through the center of a lawn. The line that separates the pathway and this garden bed was completely lost. So it took me a good few hours to get this line cut in and then clear out all of the grass. Finally, I had made some progress and you were able to see a bit of an edge. And that is when my mom decided to bring out the big guns and go and get the weed whacker. You see, on the bottom portion of this garden bed, the grass was so long we couldn't even see the rocks that we needed to get out of the way. So we needed to take the weed whacker in and get the grass short enough so we could see what we were working with. Mom and I spent a good 10 minutes marveling at how much a weed whacker can get done. It can be really hard to get a handle on the forest and we do that in many ways. One of our favorites and something I'm hoping to do a lot more of would be weed whacking. We moved all of the large rocks onto the lumber tarps to hold them in place and so that we wouldn't have to weed wax such long grass out from around the boulders once we decided it was time to put in that mortared rock wall.
Now that we were able to see what we were working with, we began laying down lumber tarps, spare carpets, and continued weeding the garden bed. Finishing touches are raking the soil out fairly evenly and continuing to get the rest of the grass clumps. I tell you, this grass is so insane to get out. I unfortunately forgot to grab footage of us dragging these two cedar trees into place. They are doing a great job of holding the soil up for us as our pseudo wall, buying us some time before we need to build that rock wall. And we are able to grow in this garden bed in the meantime because we put these logs in there. I am so impressed with how much we got done in just a few hours. We have all of this perfectly good growing space available to us this season. Even if we can't get to the rock wall right away, we are still going to be able to get a lot of growing done in this center garden bed. I absolutely love when the breeze blows and these trees start flapping because it's just such a beautiful, range of greens you could watch it forever in this garden bed there is also the raspberries mother earlier on in may came in here and actually cleared the center area out these raspberry bushes are extremely well established they have been here for upwards of five years that's a conservative estimate and they have been continuously growing and honestly we we have definitely neglected getting them kind of situated. This year mom came in and put in these posts. We also put in the wires and then she went through and weaved the raspberry canes up, took out a lot of extra, and there's still more that actually needs to be taken out in the center walkway here. We've potted the extra raspberry canes and we'll be selling them, so that's another income. There's so many of them, these raspberries are so prolific. They already have some flowers showing up. Here we go. So it looks like we're in store for a healthy raspberry harvest this year, which is perfect because it's my favorite berry. But this is like a large space for raspberries. That was a lot of work getting the logs in here. Mom brought the weed whacker out and we kind of talked about how much we love weed whacking. It gets everything so much more to a manageable size. Spent a lot of time, as you saw, individually shoveling out clumps of grass. I love these live walkways. It's good for erosion, good for water, good for animals and the dog and cat lay in it in the sunshine and it's pretty, but there's a lot of overgrow into our garden beds, which is frustrating. Hopefully now that we cut the edge in, it'll be a little bit easier to maintain. There is still a lot of work to be done, my friends, but for today, that's going to be it. You saw us come in here and lay down some more lumber tarps, move the rock off of the soil and onto the tarps so the grass is actually unable to grow up through there anymore. That really should help us manage the space a bit better. Underneath where these two logs are, that's actually about where we're going to be mortaring in an actual rock wall. So those rocks are close at hand for when that project comes. In the meantime, we're going to dig up a bit more of the grass, definitely lay down a lot of cardboard, and actually plant in this garden bed for this season. I'll bring you with me when I end up planting out the potatoes in this area. It is a switch because as you all know, I usually have planted my potatoes for the last two seasons in my no-dig garden bed. So I'm gonna take you over there and get you caught up on the situation and why we're switching garden beds. I'll link to the video in the cards so you can check out the creation of this no-dig garden bed as well as the first ever potato harvest out of this no-dig garden bed. This is going to be my third year growing potatoes. The first two years I grew potatoes, it was in this bed. 
lots of lessons were learned, but I'm switching beds because of potential diseases showing up. It's really windy. I hope that that's not messing with my mic. <laughs> um, it's actually really lovely because it's quite warm right now, but hopefully you can hear me. When you grow potatoes multiple years in a row in the same garden bed, you're bound to have volunteer potatoes, and that just means you missed a few potatoes the previous season and they've decided to grow and offer you essentially free of labor food, which is never a bad thing. That being said, a few of my volunteer potatoes had scab or some type of textural disease or issue. Once I peeled them, they were still edible. They did not go to waste, totally fine. But what that tells me is that maybe I don't want to be continuing to plant potatoes in this bed, at least for a few years. You saw in the previous video of this potato patch how I built up the soil, the amendments I've been making, and it's honestly one of the most nutrient-rich beds that we have here. It's been three years now, and I've done nothing but add compost, and it's quite, it's quite good soil. So I think that the soil health will help kick those kinds of diseases or whatever is going on <laughs> out of the soil quickly, and we'll be back to having potatoes in this garden bed very shortly. All of our garlic is planted here. As you can tell, it's very happy. We also have a few rows of leeks. There is also a lot of a bracken coming back, which is the bane of my existence. It's this stuff that looks like a fern. It's not. It's actually toxic if you eat too much of it at a time, but in a lot of oriental cultures, they will use bracken in some types of stir fries, like you would with like uh, ferns, but what are those called? Fiddleheads. They'll use them like you will a fiddlehead or sometimes dehydrate them and put them into a, a flower type form. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with bracken. Fair warning, do your research because it is toxic or has a toxic compound to it in higher quantities. So we've got, like I showed you, garlic. There's leeks in this bed. Probably gonna do some amaranth. I'm going to do some broccolinis, some tobacco. I'm trying some ceremonial tobacco this year. That'll be interesting. And of course, there's some herbs. We've got sage and parsley and bergamot, hollyhocks, a bunch of volunteer sunflowers. Who knows what else? Before I head out, I'm going to show you the front part, or I should say maybe the side part of this garden bed where the rock wall has already been mortared in. Mom does an incredible job working with rocks. Got some nice bigger rocks here in this front corner. And we'll follow that line of that cedar tree all the way down until we meet the raspberries. This path will then just become gravel like this, and it'll be a bit of a maintenance area so we can reach the wall of the high tunnel and continue to put down lumber tarps to control the weeds in this area. This is a view from in the high tunnel. As you can see, lumber tarps are definitely needed on this side wall or else it starts to just grow. Nature really is resilient. And while it's a good thing because it holds in the soil while we build up retaining walls, etc., having all of that kind of weed and stuff is not very aesthetic and eventually becomes a problem that we need to solve with the weed whacker, so. Thank you for hanging out with me today while Mother and I reclaimed the center garden bed. Of course, there is a lot more to do. We must mortar in the wall, keep on using lumber tarps and suppressing some weeds, getting some gravel in here. We have, have to finish building the high tunnel, but the main goal of having growable, workable soil available has been achieved. I'll bring you out when I start to plant the actual potatoes out. It's going to be an interesting potato year. It's a different bed. It's my first time growing potatoes somewhere other than the no-dig bed I just showed you. And I'm actually planting them out about three weeks after I have normally planted them out. So we'll see how that affects everything. As always, my friends, I will see you all back here very shortly for another video. May the force be with you. Bye-bye for now.